The late-term foal is asleep, passively fed and ventilated by its mother through the placenta, sheltered from all outside dangers. But in a few hours, it will be born, up and able to follow its mother in a very dangerous world. So let's unpack the incredible physiology of the newborn foals that allows it to make that transition so quickly. Toward the end of the pregnancy, the foal is actually lying on its back inside the mare. Its head is toward her tail, toward the exit. And the uterus, you have to remember, has three parts. Two horns and one body. The foal is in the body of the uterus. And the back legs are in one of the horn, kind of carefully kept away from getting all tangled with the other legs. So it's on its back with its front legs tucked up and its back legs gently flexed but in a different pocket, if you want, of the uterus. In fact, if you look at some picture of newborn foal, like really newborn foal when they're sleeping, you will see that they have that same position still. It's very characteristic. The foal's body decides when it needs to be born. As it starts to run out of room and food and oxygen, because there is a limit to what placenta can supply it with, it starts to feel some metabolic stresses, and that increases its cortisol. Now, some of you might know that cortisol is a stress hormone. It's produced by the adrenal glands, right? Same in the foal. So, this elevation of the cortisol starts a whole cascade of signals that gets the foal ready for the outside world and the mare ready to deliver it. To figure all that out, vets had to pull blood from the mare, okay, but also from the foals while they were still in utero. Let's reflect a moment on the amount of skills that take. Vets are amazing. Now, not entirely conscious, of course, the full brain starts to wake up, just basic things, and it moves, and it stretches, and very importantly, it starts to stretch out those front folded legs. Now, all this moving around inside the uterus is definitely felt by the mare, and it often marks the start of labor. As the uterus gets stimulated from within, it adds to the other hormone signals and prostaglandin and oxytocin are released, causing contraction. Now, the uterus doesn't contract down like a clamp. It contracts almost in torsion, and that helps to rotate the foal from lying on its back to facing upwards and toward the exit. The mare, of course, will also sometime roll to help. I remember a particular birth. At first, when the feet came out, they're kind of pointing kind of sideways. Then the mare went and rolled, and when she came back up, the feet were back down and pointing in the normal down position. And the rest of the birth just went on normally. As the foal is squeezed out of the pelvis of the mare, its chest gets quite compressed. You see, in human, the widest part of the baby is the head, right? But in horses, it's the chest. When it's fully engaged in the birth canal, the chest is compressed and the umbilical cord is squished so much that the foal stops receiving any oxygen at this point. The fit is so tight, in fact, that it's not uncommon for foals to break ribs during birth. So now, the foal has no oxygen and the CO2 is accumulating in its blood and that means the pH is dropping. This sends a signal to the brain that the situation is not good. It's a significant stress and cortisol levels continue to increase even higher. All this signals the basal part of the brain, what we call the medulla. That, that's what controls breathing, heart rate, blood pressure, and it goes into action with all these signals. So while it's a very stressful moment, it's a stress that is necessary to do the original booting up, if you will, of the brain. As the foal slips out, the medulla, this part of the brain we just talked about, sends the signal and breathing starts within 30 seconds or so. The heart rate skyrockets and the blood pressure initially increases, but as the lungs expand and the blood gets redirected to the lungs alveoli, the little air sac where, that, where the breathing happens, the pressure drops. That drop in pressure is a good thing because what you get from that is vasoconstriction. The blood vessel contracts and they get tighter and that helps with shutting down the circulation down the umbilicus. We'll get back to the umbilical cord shortly. Hey, if this is educational and useful for you so far, could you please hit the like button for me? As a small channel, every signal counts to get my content out there and noticed by YouTube. And hey, if you like the practical and scientific side of raising horses, then go ahead and subscribe because that's pretty much all I talk about. Okay, now let's get back to the full. 
That first breath expanded the lungs. Whatever was initially in the lungs mostly got squeezed out by the birth, right? And now the cells that are coating those little alveoli in the lungs, they start to secrete a surfactant that will make the oxygen exchange easier. Now, the lungs really need all the room they can get to fully expand, and that is why the foal needs to get to a sternal position, resting like with its head up. And it needs to do that pretty quickly to really get those lungs to expand. Most do. Most, on average, actually, foals take four to five minutes to get themselves in that position. And sometimes that happens before the back legs are fully out of the mare, too. I mean, it's such a strong instinct for one for them to want to be sternal. Talking about those long legs, by the way, remember how they stretched and move inside the uterus as they found their way to the birth canal? Well, foals are born with fully hardened hooves. They need them to support their weight within minutes, as we're going to see, and allow them to run on different terrain soon after. So they're already formed, they're hard, they're pretty sharp, but thankfully, they're also covered by a sheddable, soft, keratin slipper of sort. Very delicate and gone the moment they touch anything hard. In fact, <laughs> I'm sharing some stock photo and picture from other breather because I was na never able to photograph them because by the time I'm done dipping the umbilicus, checking on the mare, remembering to breathe and then getting my camera out, they're gone or mostly gone. But they're very cool. The temperature drop between the body of the mare and the outside world, the, the feel of the gravity, and all the stimulation that comes from the exterior world is now really stimulating its brain and raising its awareness. At first, they will breathe around 60 to 70 times per minute. It'll go down to 50 times per minute within about an hour. And finally, the normal 34 to 40 times a minute. That's excluding when they're struggling to get up. The heart has closed its interior bypass. All that happened when that pressure dropped, when the lungs opened up, and it's now beating and moving blood normally at 60 to 120 beats per minute, depending if the foal, of course, is resting or exerting itself. Now, speaking of exerting itself, um, the newborn foal has no energy reserve. Unlike some mammals that have what is referred to as brown fat or baby fat, the foal travels very light into this world, if we can say that. It has very limited resource. It needs to feed very soon after birth to get that energy from the milk of its mother. But to feed, it needs to get up, but it's still connected to the placenta, and that placenta is most likely still in the mare at this point. The vasoconstriction we talked about earlier, that thinned and fragilized the veins. There's two veins and one, no, one vein and two arteries in the umbilical cord. Those things will get thinner. The other thing that is in there is the tube that links the bladder to the placenta. That connection needs to be severed. And then the urine needs to go back out the normal way. Amazingly, there's a weak spot built in to the cord. It's a part where the cord will just rip more easily. If it did not tear easily, if you think about it, it would cause all kind of problem and likely eliminate these horses or these animals from the gene pool. So evolution took care of that for the most part. Now the stretching that leads to the ripping also kind of pinches those veins and that uricus, that's the name of the, the tube that connects the, um, um, the bladder to the outside world. That uricus can remain open and that can be a pathway for infection. So the foal really needs a good immune system. Everything that got kicked off with that rise in the cortisol that we uh, talked about earlier, that includes the production of immune response cells, the lymphocyte and the neutrophils. They're the soldiers of the immune system and their number are going up, but these soldiers have no instructions. The foal is born with no immune memory, no knowledge of what is friend or foe. That information is in immunoglobulins, and those very large molecules did not get past the placenta. So it's another reason why the foal needs to get up soon. All those immunoglobulins are waiting in the mare's colostrum. For a window of about 12 to 24 hour max, the foal's gut is designed to absorb those big antibodies protein, whole. They just absorb them whole without breaking them down and they will go directly into the foal's bloodstream 
where a blood test can actually detect them just a few hours later. That's what the IgG test you might have heard about means. So immunoglobulins are found all throughout the body, but the G type are the ones that are circulating in the blood, hence the term Ig for immunoglobulin and the type G, IgG. This way of getting those molecules into the bloodstream is a trade-off, of course, because it can lead to the absorption of bad protein and toxins. So that pathway cannot stay open forever. After 16 to 20 hours, the gut matures to the point that those doors close, and the antibodies are no longer absorbed, but are instead digested, broken down, and excreted. The foal needs to get up and nurse. So now, about 15 to 20 minutes on the outside, the foal is awake, conscious of its surrounding, and now as the brain gains awareness of its surrounding, it starts to realize that lying down is a precarious and dangerous position, uncomfortable, and that's what triggers the instinct to want to get up. Within 20 to 30 minutes of birth, most foal will be actively trying to get up. The first step we saw earlier was staying sternal, right, on their chest. Then you will see them kind of cross and uncross their front legs as they're trying to figure out where they are. And all this moving around will send feedback back to the brain and they will start to map out their position and space. Next, you will see them experiment using their neck and back muscle to try to get off their chest and raise themselves up. <sighs> this is pretty tiring. They will often take a break at this point. But the mare by then is up and about, and she will more than likely be licking the foal up on their neck and their back, and they wither. And that is a place where the foals react quite strongly to being touched there. It's, it's a bit uncomfortable, actually, and you will see them struggle as the mare is, is licking them. You think it's like they're encouraging, she's encouraging him to get up, and in a way, she really is, because getting stimulated there makes them want to get up even more. And if the mare's not doing it, if you're doing it as the foaling attendant, you get some pretty strong response there. So, you will see them struggle to get up. They will be flexing their back legs now. They'll be flexing the, the hawks, just pushing around, trashing the straw as they just try out those legs. And finally, they'll get to the point where they will lurch forward, put all their weight on their front legs and quickly unfold their back legs. The aim is to get a leg in each corner and lock them. And if they do that, they're up. If not, well, they fall and they try again, and every time the brain is getting more information and it gets everything it needs to do better the next time. Usually, amazingly, it takes only two or three tries and they're up. Now, to keep their balance as they're up, they kind of rock back and forth, and eventually that's going to force them to kind of take a step. And bam, there you go. That's how the foal goes from a sleeping full-term fetus to a mini horse in just about an hour. Amazing every single time.